Asked last week to predict a January winner, NHK Pundit and ex Yokozuna Kitano Fuji wrote, If Tedono Fuji's injured, everyone has a shout. But if Tedono Fuji's fit, the title is his. Kitano Fuji's student, Chairman Hakkaku, felt that this bout yesterday foretold the likelier outcome. But let's just check against today's latest evidence. Yes, Teru is amply fit, and with sumo senses sharper than the knives out for Hakuho. Takakage devises the optimum ploy for a man of his size. A customized package of speed, swerve and muscle, designed to swing or tug from the left, and uproot Teru from the right. But even when fighting yards outside himself, Waka fails. The champion's diagonal knee defense and relentless pursuit of the clamp just overwhelming. I'm simply keeping him in front of me, was how Teru described the route to a 20th straight victory. He claims that is not important, but if he keeps surviving every single teeter as now, his streak could rival Bill Goldberg's. A spillover from Teru's success is the rapid ascent of Atami Fuji. Just 14 months a pro, and already even to his surprise, just one rung off a salary. 60 to 80 practice bouts a day is staple for this driven teenager, whose competitive win yesterday was his 37th from 43. In such form, the bouts can't come soon enough, meaning Atami was thrilled to be back today, this time on the Division 2 sheet, and without enough hair for the full top knot. Once more was struggling Yago made to defend rank against a hungry contender. And once more did Yago lose to a truly awesome talent. Tense for sure, Atami confessed, but looked composed enough to complete his plan. Wrap around from the right and drive with frontal left. Tedonofuji told him not to be overwhelmed by a salaried wrestler. Win just two of his final five, and Atami will be a salaried wrestler, just as quickly as his Yokozuna coach, and only two months slower than joint record holder N. Hall. Also in Division 3 today came a lively meeting of sumo generations. 36-year-old Akiseyama against 22-year-old Hokutenkai. Tenkai's left arm may no longer be bandaged, but it's still not as strong as Akisayama's. You'd think these two couldn't be more different. Until, that is, you recall the path they've both walked. Same high school, same practice dohyo, same coach. In Division 2, for the second day running, bout of the afternoon featured Koto Shoho, having his first taste of far-fallen Kagayaki. Only when under siege does he really click into gear, is what Shoho makes us think. His last ditch defense is remarkable. And you really feel his desire to set examples for younger brother Taiki, whose pre-sumo debut is, I believe, tomorrow. 
In other news, coach Nishikido, having tested negative for COVID yesterday, retested positive today. It seems his wrestlers came back negative, but are definitely close contacts and as such remain sidelined. And chairman Hakkaku has warned Uda not to cling on to lost causes after a disastrous ending to this match with Shodai. The pink belter was badly concussed following this thudding fall onto back of head and cervical spine. That's what he does. That's his fighting spirit, Hakkaku began. But my goodness, if he clings on like that, he could harm his foe as well as himself. Uda's spirits did seem to have picked up by the end of the TV broadcast, though. Meanwhile, the Abi bandwagon rolls on. His lightning right hand almost chopping Chiyoshoma's neck in two. He's full of technique, so I set out to keep him at a safe distance was how Abby described his plan. He's also still not living with his wife and child, he revealed last week, as they are yet to find a suitable apartment close enough to his stable. Both on and off the dohyo does Abby seek to deliver major change in 2022. Elsewhere, healthy pressure is what drew this intense display from Mitake Umi today, so says the man himself. I got whacked backwards a bit, but never let my head rise and kept fighting back from below, he added. However, another of Teronofuji's title rivals... <laughs> ...lost to Meisei for the second time straight, despite the latter's heavily taped hips. Keisho's got to be more tenacious, said opinion fountain Hakkaku. He wasn't fully committed to the attack, meaning it was all upper body. His legs didn't catch up. He must get this out of his system quickly. Tomorrow is key. Keisho may not even have a bout tomorrow if Uda remains concussed. Let's hope a sensible course is taken. But whatever Keisho does from now on, Teronofuji has today glimpsed the crack which allows him to think that once the two have fought on day 15, his winning streak will be 33.